Hello and welcome to this course on extrusion compounding of plastics. The first lecture is on introduction to extrusion compounding. We are going to just look at and introduce the compounding process as such and we are just going to look at the, some of the definitions which are surrounding this extrusion compounding sector or the area. So we are going to look at the definitions, the history and the basics related to extrusion compounding. So we are going to look at it one by one. So what is an extruder? It is a machine that melts, mixes and pumps a thermoplastic material through a die to create a continuous shape. Next is extrusion compounding. Now extrusion is used for a lot of different processes. It is a process in which a thermoplastic material is melted, mixed with other additives and or fillers and then extruded through a die to form a continuous shape. Next is a polymer. Okay, this is, this is uh, very important and very simple as such. So it's a large molecule which is made up of repeating units called monomers. Now uh, you find that uh, polymers are further subdivided into different categories. You get something like plastics, you get something like fibers, you get something like rubbers. So not every polymeric material will be able to convert, get converted it into a fiber. And not every polymeric material has very high elongation which makes it uh, to be called as a rubber. And not every material is rigid enough. So if you talk about fiber or uh, maybe rubbers, they are not rigid enough, uh, flexible and rigid at the same time. So we call this category generally as plastic. So when we subdivide uh, plastics, we find thermoplastic and thermosetting plastics. Uh, when we are talking about extrusion compounding, we are largely focusing on thermoplastics, which can be melted, and then which can be remelted and remolded into different shapes and sizes. So I take a bottle, I crush a bottle again, which is the primary methodology of recycling. I crush a bottle again, I pass it through extrusion, add some additives into it, and I can make different products with it again. Right. So this is the remelting and remolding feature that you generally get with thermoplastics. Uh, what are additives? These are chemicals that are added to a polymer to enhance its properties or functionality examples include colorants, stabilizers and flame retardants. Okay, next is uh, fillers. So they are inert materials that are added to the polymer. So we are talking about inert materials, right? So the idea is that fillers should never play around uh, with, with respect to any kind of maybe chemical structure formation or something like that. So they, they stay there and they reinforce it by physically getting mixed. And they are added to the polymer to reduce cost. Uh, stiffness is something that you would certainly get with uh, almost all the fillers, be it talc or calcium carbonate as well. So you might not see any improvements in the tensile strength, uh, particularly of uh, materials, but uh, when you add these fillers, even particulate ones, you would find that the Young's modulus or the stiffness values are going to improve. And they also improve other properties as well. So uh, there are certain fillers which may, uh, you know, sort of uh, increase a lot of strength values uh, something like glass fiber, it's a filler, but it improves. So it's it's called a reinforcing filler. Rather, you would generally find other fillers as just extenders, which are not reinforcing in nature, but they occupy space and with them occupying space, the cost of the recipe or the formulation is going to go down. Some examples include tal, calcium carbonate and glass fibers. And more and more as, as we are you know going ahead, you would find that more and more uh, organic based fillers are also coming into the picture. So in fact, uh, uh, India as a country uh, produces a lot of agricultural waste and uh, the newer concepts of wood plastic composites are now coming into the picture. And you'll find that a lot of big brands are basically trying to absorb, uh, you know, these kind of products which are WPCs, but they are not traditionally using wood, they are using agricultural waste instead of wood. Now there are a lot of problems around uh, the engineering and the tailoring of the properties of these parts, uh, when you are using something which is woody in nature, basically having cellulose, you are attracting bacteria and fungi as well. So you have to engineer the properties of the material, but then these big brands, what they are doing is they are absorbing it under the CSR policies that they have, this corporate social responsibility. So wonderful area to work in, wood plastic composite. Next is a dye. So dye is the last member of an extruder. Right, so it's an integral part of an extruder, one of the costliest members of an extrusion unit. I'm not talking about the whole line, I'm just talking about the extruder unit machine. And you would find it's a specialized tool to use to shape a molten polymer into a specific form, such as a sheet, tube, or a profile. So you would find different types of dyes being used for different applications. 
you get uh, what you are seeing over here is something like a strand dye which is majorly used into compounding if you talk about something like cast film extrusion you would require something which is known as a fishtail dye or a port hanger dye which are really very costly if you talk something about blown film extrusion you would get a dye which is a co extrusion dye if, if there are multi layers and along with that you might find that you get an oscillating dye which takes care of the roll crowning that it should not happen so dyes are different for different types of processes uh, when we are talking about compounding uh, if you are making compound you would find that uh, a dye would have opening of maybe 4 5 holes to around 20 holes depending on how much back pressure your machine can generate and extrude successfully next is residence time so you can see an anime at the bottom so we are talking about the input of these granules so once the red granules enter what is the time they stay inside till the red colored material exits the dye so this is the residence time these are some miscellaneous definitions so first is throughput the amount of material that passes through an extruder per unit of time it is determined by the screw speed the screw design and the melt viscosity of the polymer next is back pressure so i already talked about this but we'll formally look at it again the resistance encountered by the molten polymer as it is forced through the die high back pressure can indicate a problem with the extrusion process such as a clogged screen so you might find i told you that uh, screen pack and breaker plate are largely to create this back pressure if you don't have that you would find the back pressure would be very very less some cases you may require a significant amount of pressure for the material to go out right say for example if we are talking about fiber spinning or fiber extrusion we are talking about a die which is a spinneret and we are talking about micron size fibers maybe 150 holes which the material has to sort of you know create a pressure to move away if it is very difficult for an extruder to create such a pressure without the presence of a dedicated device which is known as a melt pump so it's a gear based pump which is used to pump the material inside to create the pressure so that it moves out of those spinneret uh, with the micron size holes as well so it is it is the pressure that is created at the top head of the uh, just before the die so it is a resistance which is encountered by the molten polymer uh, as it is forced through the die and high back pressure can indicate a problem with the extrusion process you might be having unmelted material or a lot of times high filler percentages and higher output rates may mean that uh, the wetting of fillers is not happening and when wetting of fillers is not happening it is very similar to i don't know whether you have tried making a soup at your home what generally happens is if you don't uh, mix the way they should have been mixed you would find that there would be lumps of these soup powder in your water right and uh, if you break that lump you would find that there would be what is coming from the inside is totally dry meaning that water has not wet each and every particle that was there in the soup the powder that we have right so uh, it may you may get very similar kind of setup uh, you can get it outside the dye as well if you if you see a strand coming out and if you break it down you may be able to visibly see uh, some material which is not wetted filler filler particles more happens in particulate fillers right next is mfi it's a very important uh, property and that is why probably you are just looking at mfi not other material uh, properties mfi is melt flow index and it's a measure of the viscosity of the polymer melt which indicates how easily that it can be processed through an extruder it is determined by measuring the weight of the polymer that flows through a standardized die under a standardized load and temperature next is die swell the expansion of the polymer as it exits the die which can affect the dimensions and surface quality of the final product die swell is influenced by the melt viscosity elasticity and temperature of the polymer so die swell as the name suggests die swell so swelling which is caused after the material exits the die as simple as that so you would find that there would be a lot of pressure with which the material is moving out moving into the die right through the converging or the diverging sections and as soon as it exits the material relaxes and it swells right so uh, it is influenced by the melt viscosity the elasticity and the temperature at which the polymer is being extruded next is screw speed the rate at which the screws inside the extruder rotate which affects the degree of mixing and the shear rate experienced by the polymer higher screw speeds can cause shear heating and degradation of the polymer so higher screw speeds as i have told you that if you are let's say thinking of increasing the output higher screw speed if the viscosity is really very high if you increase the screw speed it will naturally increase the torque 
and uh, if you don't stop the machine the screws may decouple up above a certain torque value if you don't want that to happen you will run it at a lower uh, speed right or you may increase the temperature and then go for running it at higher speed so a lot of permutations and combinations next is an extrude date so the product that is extruded from an extruder it can be any form it can be a sheet a film a profile or a tube the quality of the extruded is influenced by the processing conditions the design of the die and the properties of the polymer so anything that comes out of the die which is in the hot melt state is an extruded now it is then taken for different shaping so for pipe you may require uh, either pressure sizing or vacuum sizing using a sleeve or if you are going for a strand you may directly take it into a uh, you know into a cooling trough and then take it uh, ahead uh, maybe through air knife or maybe if you are working with a pelletizer through air knife and then uh, you take it into the pelletizer if you are working with cast film you would find that as soon as the material comes out of the coat hanger die it is then taken onto a chill roll and after that there may be biaxial orientation that you are going to do in a oven and along with using the center frames and dentar hooks if you are talking about something like blown film as soon as the material comes out of the die in again a pipe shape cross section you are going to sort of pinch it and then pass it through the nip rolls and then slowly blow it to get the desired bubble diameter that you want so this material which is coming out of the in the hot melt state is known as the extruded just a couple of slides over the history of extrusion compounding where did it originate from the history of extrusion compounding can be traced back to the end of the 18th century where first rubber was mixed with sulfur uh, to create more durable and flexible material for the process we all know about this this is known as vulcanization so sulfur bonds are going to create uh, you know a binding between rubber uh, we call it cross linking it is going to produce a, a sort of a thermoset structure which is a vulcanized structure of rubber and it creates more rigidity in the polymer uh, in the rubbery material which will then make it uh, you know uh, enable it to be used for uh, these applications otherwise rubber is very elastic and soft and you would find that it will give away wear and mechanical strength would be lower pretty easily in the early 20th century plastic began to emerge as the new material for a wide range of applications remember we are talking about early 20th century it's still a time where uh, there were a lot of plastics that were invented inside the lab but still uh, large scale production was not very popular because of the lack of demand it really picked up in the uh, 50s or 40s or 50s where world war 2 happened so in the earlier 20th century plastic began to plastic began to emerge as a new material with a wide range of applications the first thermoplastic compounding was done uh, in 1935 by paul and his wife ashley in the 1930s extrusion compounding was used to mix various plastics with various other materials like fillers pigments and stabilizers to enhance their properties it's a very old technology during this time extrusion compounding was primarily used in the production of automobile uh, or automotive parts and electrical insulation so i don't know whether you know or not but there was a car that was made by henry ford i'm talking about the year 1941 if i'm not wrong 41 42 and the whole car was made up of sustainable polymeric materials we are talking about bio derived materials which can be engineered uh, even in today's world if you look at the you and try around bioplastics these bioplastics um, any polymer that you say ptt or uh, uh, pla for example they have to be compounded properly without which you will not find them being able to be used for the mechanical property requirements that they need to have to be used for flexible packaging applications so i've come to an end to this uh, lecture which was on uh, definitions history and basics of extrusion compounding